Our first question comes from Nate. Hey y'all, I recently saw a post from 475 Supply. For those of you who don't know, it's one of those companies that uh, distributes uh, European um, you know, air sealing, uh, weather resistant barriers and tapes and uh, you know the, the good stuff for passive house building mostly. It's a good company, um, I think, by the way. I, I don't, you know, I, I uh, they're not an advertiser, uh, but I think that um, I've had some interactions when I've been doing some research with some of their salespeople and they're super knowledgeable. Yes. I've had super helpful experiences with their, like, and I'm, I'm not like looking, these weren't to buy products. This was like, because I was kind of turned on to them as a source, I would reach out and, and I always find them really to know not only their products, but also building well. They take the, um, what I feel is the most ethical and productive approach to sales and that's consumer education. And, mm-hmm. uh, that is really, uh, your, your sales rep can be a, a huge help or they can be someone who's a pain and they yeah. seem to do a really good job. Uh, he said the, they showcased a Larson truss retrofit to an existing stud frame house. The existing house already had sheathing on it. They added the Larson trusses, insulation, and a WRB with no additional sheathing. My question to you guys is, do you think this is a good idea to look into for my timber frame house build? It seems worth looking into uh, being that the timber frame is being is structural without any sheathing. It would save a couple thousand dollars and lots of time for me. There are some other things to consider. I did a half inch drywall, a worm side air slash vapor barrier, and seven and a half inch Larson trusses trusses screwed to the timbers, uh, 24 inches on center. My thinking is that the Larson trusses would add a lot of strength to resist racking. I'll attach a few pictures for your viewing pleasure. Thanks for all you guys do. Always fun to tune into the podcast. So I guess the question is, do you think Larson trusses add racking resistance to a structure? And is that necessary with a timber frame? Is the question, do they add racking resistance? Or he mentions the fact that they weren't sheathed. Is he asking, should I sheathe them to add racking resistance? Because otherwise, I don't understand how. Yeah, I don't understand he the wants, question. I think to omit the sheathing, and he wants to know if uh, putting Larson trusses on for his insulation layer will uh, be sufficiently structurally sound. Uh, is is there a need for a sheathing on this? Is my interpretation. Well, so I think if, if it's, I mean, of course, there's so many depends in a question like this. But if this were like a true kind of timber frame, right? A timber frame, a true timber frame structure, the racking resistance is designed into it. Right with with horizontal bracing, typically, um, so typically you wouldn't need sh- to add a- additional racking resistance to a designed structural timber frame. I think mm-hmm. so. That's the short answer, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then right. he's got uh, on top of the timber frame or on the exterior of the timber frame his um, you know air control layer, which in his case is uh, one of these European. Uh, air- WRBs, as I can tell, and uh, he's got his Larson trusses on top of that, and um, yeah. What do you think, Mike? Yep. Uh, there's no need for structural sheathing to provide, or the Larson, Larson truss to provide that racking resistance. As, as Brian mentioned, the knee braces that you put on a timber frame are going to be enough. So if, if you're just putting, so so I guess the question comes down to, does he need sheathing on the outside of the Larson trusses, which is commonly done? You put up the Larson trusses over the existing building, or in this case, a timber frame, and then put wall, you know, structural wood panels, plywood or OSB over the top of that, and then you put your cladding. 475, uh, their post just suggested that all you need is the WRB over that. And yep, that works perfectly fine. You don't need any additional sheathing because the timber frame is structurally sound. What about the uh, ease or difficulty of installing the cladding? Uh, It depends on what you're going to put on there, right? Whether it's Mm going to be easy with sheathing or without. If you're putting up cedar shingles, as an example, Mm -hmm. I sure would want sheathing. Well, if you want to put uh, cedar shingles, you could just put some one by threes or one by fours horizontally for every course, which essentially sheaths the entire <laughs> building by the time you're done. Um, but if you're putting on horizontal cladding, you know, like a, a, a fiber cement plank or a cedar plank, then yeah, you don't, it can just nail right into those uh, Larson truss studs, essentially the verticals. 
Yeah, we had, I mean, I, I wrote an article about Larson trusses within the last year. So check that out. And I, I think it shows a few different ways to, you know, to do the cladding attachments. I don't think any of the examples that we gave were sheathed. Um, so they were all in the, and I think they all had some additional uh, strapping over the uh, over the Larson trusses to create a, an air gap behind the side and to not have them right against the WRB. And like Mike said, there's a number of ways to do that. Um, you're doing vertical siding. It's really easy to do, you know, horizontal strapping and then run your vertical siding. If you want to have that air gap and you're doing horizontal siding, then it becomes two layers of strapping. But or or maybe you're okay with just putting the siding right over the trusses and not having that air gap. It mm-hmm. Depends on yeah. how you want your wall to behave. Nate, awesome job. I mean, the ambition and chops of our listeners is pretty mind-blowing oftentimes. And uh, boy, this is one of those examples. The the place is amazing. Uh, Yeah. What do you guys think? Well, were the photos Nate's or were they the photos he copied from uh, the 475 post? I wasn't sure. I I, I think they're Nate's, but maybe they were too. Yeah. Then indeed. Well done. (laughs) <laughs> yeah i i mean i you know i i love i i, I like uh in a from an both a craftsmanship perspective you know i feel like timber framing is really a pinnacle of car one of the pinnacles of carpentry and then from an aesthetic perspective i i and and sort of design you know envelope or enclosure perspective i love that like this idea that you can you can have this timber frame that's completely structural. You can put all of your sort of enclosure details outside it. You get to see that timber frame from the inside of the house. So you always get to see this beautiful craftsmanship. It's just, a, it's just such a wonderful way to build. Mm-hmm. Any carpenter would agree, right? We, we take the best part of the house, right? The beautiful part. And then we cover it up with all this cheap garbage uh, for when, the, when it's compl- nearing completion. You know, I was at the, I was at the, um, I was at the Build Show, Build Show Live a few weeks ago, and I was listening to Matt Reisinger's uh, keynote, and he he you know called out one of uh, his projects, which won an award from Fine Home Building when uh, when we were doing the Houses Awards, and um, the House won the Editor's Choice Award, and it was simply it was a so it was it was sort of this house where Matt was first learning about and playing with the perfect wall idea from Joe Stebrick. So he put all the control layers outside of the frame. And then they realized we can leave the framing exposed on the inside. So they did, they did take the time to have board sheathing on the house instead of, you know, uh, cheat good sheathing so that that's what you would see from the interior. But other than that, they just framed the house normally and then painted everything white and left the framing exposed. And it's, it's gorgeous. And it's, 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 it's just like the same way all of our houses are framed. They painted it and it's beautiful. Hmm. How do you get away with the fu- you know the fire problem of that? What is is I mean is that allowed? It's, Mike's it, shaking his head. What's up with it, Mike? It is allowed because you don't have any concealed spaces. That the, the all fire blocking and fire resistant is is controlling for fire and and smoke that travel through hidden cavities between concealed floors and concealed walls. Once you put the drywall on, if you if you don't have drywall there. There's no problem. So if you put all your control layers on the outside and you expose all your roof trusses on the inside and all your studs on the inside, you don't have any concealed spaces. Good to go. I'm yeah. doing that in my next house. I'm totally <laughs> doing that. Oh yeah. Matt also mentioned how like the, the house has sold since the first owners and how the new owners remodeled to the kitchen and uh, which, yeah, I mean, remodel the kitchen, you know, take that lightly because the kitchen's kind of this bump out with, 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 with that all the cabinetry fits within. And uh, he said, you know, kitchen remodel took a day, mm-hmm. you know, <laughs> which may, which is also a great you know benefit of that. Yeah. It's that uh, kind of beach cottage aesthetic, right? Where, uh, you know, yeah, I I love it. it.